Good boy, thanks for stopping by. Uh, today we're just down at the park and just doing a quick review of the Brass Monkey Dual Zone fridge. Now, I think it's at this stage that I have to admit that I have a little bit of a problem. I'm now on to my third Brass Monkey. The question is, how many fridges does one need? Mate, I think, I think we need to talk. I think you've got a serious problem. I know what you're talking about, man. I, I, I don't have a problem. Uh, everything's fine. Tell me how it started. What happened? I, I just I just figured out that I like my stuff cold, you know? Yeah. It's not a problem. Like, I, 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 could, I could go with hot stuff if I had to. Uh, not everything has to be cold. It's not an addiction. Well, how did it start? Like, what, what originally kicked it off for you? It started with an ice block, you know? Like, I went to a mate's car and he, he reached in the back and he just pulled out this ice block and it was cold. And it was the best thing I've ever had. Look, at the end of the day, mate, I think you've got enough. I think I think you've got more than enough and I think you need to sell some. Yeah, but how many is too many? I, I just want one more. Just one more. Can I have one more? Mate, look, we've had a chat and it's getting out of hand. You need to do something about this. I don't know what you're talking about, man. Everything's fine. You need to go and see somebody. And I think you need to stop with this, all right? I can't go back. I won't go back. I want another fridge! Okay, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Today's video, we're going to be looking at the Brass Monkey 35 litre dual zone fridge. And the Brass Monkey dual zone 45 litre fridge. It's probably about time that I admit that I've got a problem. Let me explain to you why. Brass Monkey, 15 litre, review up there. Waco, 35 litre, single zone. Haven't used that for quite a while, still works. Giant, 40 litre, single zone. First fridge I ever bought, bloody beauty. Brass Monkey, 45 litre, dual zone. Got it. So happy with it, but it didn't quite fit into what I wanted to do in the four-wheel drive. So I went out and bought Brass Monkey 35 litre dual zone. We're not done. Dometic, I think it's 30 litre. Draw fridge, it's either Pajero. So this is my 24-7 fridge. That stays in, stays on all the time. Just for doing drinks, etc. But you can see there's a bit of an issue with that, that's as far as that comes out, so it becomes a royal pain in the backside when it comes to packing that for camping. How many fridges does one need? And I'd probably suggest to you, not this bloody many. This is why I don't do drugs and have never done drugs. I've got an addictive personality and I've got hobbies up the wazoo and I throw buckets of money at all this sort of stuff and then I move on to the next thing like that. It means I'm absolutely shit with money. So it's nice to do the YouTube thing. Chips me up a little bit, gives me a little bit of money. About 300 to 500 bucks a month, depending on how many videos I put out. And you know, I've been a little bit slack lately. That allows me to buy things for the YouTube channel, to get the YouTube channel going and uh, do reviews and things like that. And obviously I get some stuff sent out to me for purpose of review. One other thing that's coming up real soon for the Pajero guys, a heap of people have always asked me about getting a latch and figuring out how to do some sort of mod on the back of the door to be able to open it up from inside. As you know, I camp in the back of the Majero and I've ordered a latch and I've got it, but there's no instructions with it, come from China. Um, so we're going to do an install video of that coming up probably in the next few weeks or something. We'll get around to that, but I've got to pull the table and everything off to get into the back of that. So we'll do a walkthrough. I'll show you how to put it in. We'll see if it works. Now, if I've got any advice for anybody as far as buying fridges, it always pops up on forums and all that sort of stuff, and you always hear people. Basically, if, if, if you jump on a forum and you ask people what fridge do they recommend, they're gonna recommend the one they've got. Now, generally as a rule, the reason they will do that is because mostly, I would probably say 98% of your fridges, they cool stuff, which means they're working. And if they work, they're great, everybody's happy with them and they don't complain. Probably 2% of people will get a bung one or whatever and ultimately it comes down to the same as when you're buying anything. Look at the brand, as long as you're going with basically a known brand, you've heard the name and stuff like that, have a look at the warranty. And if it's got a decent warranty, go and pick the color you like. Go and pick the, the fridge that you like the look of. Don't worry about what name's written on the side. 
there was something you can afford and something you like the look of and one that just basically does the things you want the giant down there i've had that probably seven or eight years maybe i can't remember but i did a little review on that when i was starting out the youtube i've got the waco the waco gave me a little bit of grief with the mister that seems to be a thing with wacos then i bought the little draw fridge to go in the side of the car here just awesome fit in the build really well and then i changed to a compressor fridge in the uh, in the caravan best decision ever made changing over to a compressor fridge in the caravan i highly highly recommend it and then we've got the 15 litre brass monkey here then i've got the 45 litre brass monkey here now i've got the 35 litre brass monkey there so with all that in mind at the end of the day the brass monkey fridges that i have here that we're going to be taking a look at they've all just worked i've had the 45 litre for probably three or more months now and it's been running 24 7 in the house this has become my work fridge so i'll make up my meals i'll throw everything into this so it's not going into my main house fridge and this has been running 24 7 so like i said probably about three months maybe four months this one i've had for several weeks now probably a month or so uh, again second hand when i originally picked this one up it had a bit of noise when i got i didn't have the noise when i picked it up so maybe something's moved in transit when i got home i jumped into it realized Look, I've heard this noise before. Basically, it was the fan was rubbing on a cable in there. Piss off, dickhead. So the good news is it's just a heap of screws. So you've got three across here. And one, two, three on this side. You don't need to actually take the wheels off. Uh, and there are three. Uh, on the bottom here as well. Those screws out, you can just grab this and just pull it out. There is our fan, just here. And here are some wires that are just going in there and pressing against that fan, so they just need to be rerouted. Plug it back in, see what happens. This is the inside of your brass monkey, the other one looks the same. This is your control board, or your power control board, which I also believe does your solar controlling as well. So this is where the power income comes in, goes into here, your solar's coming in here as well and I'm going into the same board and obviously that's then powering the fridge or going to the battery. All the wiring actually looks pretty good. I mean I've had a look in a few fridges now and everything looks nice and tidy. Our compressor, you can see there's a Chinese brand, Hua, Hua Gun, H-U-A-G-U-N I think that is, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, there's a model number if you want to have a look at that. Hang on. Two seconds. Piss off, idiot. Um, so what we basically did was we got into the back of the fridge, took the back off, uh, just moved that cable. I could see it was touching the fan, and it's been quiet as. What I will say about the brass monkey fridges is they are not the quietest fridge. They're not certainly not noisy by any standard, and I will sleep with these sitting literally right beside me in the car when I've got the camp when I've got the bed set up in the back of the Bajero, I'll sleep right beside these without issue. And to give you an idea, that's basically what it would look like. Um, I would have the mattress in there like that, uh, and this would raise up my fan a little bit, but certainly not anything that's gonna be particularly uncomfortable for me. Fortunately, I suppose I could lay like this, but in addition to being able to hear the fridge, I can feel the vibrations in it as well. It's not terrible, and it might actually serve to put me asleep, but once you put a pillow on top of it, you probably wouldn't feel a lot of that, but the other option is it just goes in beside the mattress there as well and I use the usual box that I put in here. But I like this option of having this here, not having to take that additional box and then having this right there as far as cooking goes. Just everything being there at the same spot is kind of what I'm going for. I could fall asleep under a barbed wire fence in the middle of a storm. So if you're not one of those people, maybe some earplugs or something like that, now this is just cycled on at the moment, so I'm going to shut up and let you listen to this. So whilst they're not the quietest fridge I've ever heard, certainly far from noisy. And yeah, you know, when I've got this set up in bed mode, having yeah, uh, having that literally right beside me while I'm sleeping has not been an issue for me at all. As far as the two fridges go, 
This is the 35, the 45 sitting there beside you. They're basically the same footprint. So the diameter of whether it be width or length, uh, they are the same. The only difference between these two is the height. The lid from this one can be taken off. You'll see that they are interchangeable they are identical and can be switched around from fridge to fridge now the fridges all the brass monkeys certainly the ones I've got whether it be the 35 the 45 or the little 15 the lids are all reversible you'll see they just have these little tabs which could prove to be a weak point at some stage but not thus far and they just drop into the sides so there's little notches there they just drop in there and then you've got the latch on either side so if you wanted to reverse it it is this easy and that quick and now your fridge opens up from the other side now in the lid itself on both of those again the lids are identical so they're the same item you will see you do have a little cutting board it comes in both of them what's that probably mm, 15 centimeters or something like that so about six in no probably a bit bigger than six inches maybe call it eight inches or something along those lines so that's probably so just a, a nifty little addition so if you want to you know pull out your cheeses or something when you're on a picnic and you got your fridge there and your cutting board's already on board and that's handy for when you're adding it into something like i've got here with the uh camp kitchen type configuration to have a little extra cutting board in there one thing i just wanted to check i was just seeing this hole here yeah okay um, so we just figured that out. That sits in there and then you can chop everything straight on top of your fridge. Bloody handy that. We've got a rubber seal that goes around the circumference of the lid. That looks like it's a pretty straightforward sort of profile. Let's have a look. So that would probably be easy to get a replacement from that just from somewhere like Clark Rubber. So in the fridge itself you've got little LEDs, you've got one in each side which is nice, so that's convenient, gives you nice good lighting. Uh, in both of these ones, so in the 35 and the 45, uh, and I did look like it had it in the 70 as well, 75, little drain plug which is nice, you can just hose those out. The 45 actually needs a bit of a clean so we're going to give that a hit with the hose shortly. Baskets, so they just pull out. Um, and I quite like baskets because they allow the air to circulate around your food when you've got to absolutely chock a block. It keeps that space, gives me somewhere to hang my little thermometer, um, and it stops the walls getting dented when you're throwing, you know, bottles and things in like that. Uh, and then this is the freezer. Now, again, because this is the same as the 45, this is the 35 we're looking at the moment, this footprint that you're looking at here is identical but in the 45 it's just deeper so you don't get any more width or anything in here uh, the free the freezer section doesn't get any longer or any wider it just gets deeper so to give you an idea of the freezer section this is in the 35 so it's coming up to the basically to the top of that label if we go over to the 45 you can see there's it's taking that whole bottle and another couple of inches on top of that. So that freezer in this one's quite a bit bigger. Now the lid, I like the locking mechanism. It's nice to have a nice latch for a change. Now, compared to the little latches that you have on this one here, this is the 15, these latches are a lot more positive and it's nice just to hear that click when you shut that lid. The wheels are excellent uh, and they work really well. I would like to probably see them a little bit bigger because as you see there, when I was dragging this across the grass field, I was dragging the bag along the bottom and getting a little bit of damage. And I've tried dragging these downstairs and stuff like that. They're not quite big enough. You'll see there's not a lot of clearance between the actual fridge and the bottom of that wheel. We're only talking maybe, maybe a centimetre at absolute most. Probably less than a centimetre uh, between the bottom of the wheel and the bottom of this actual fridge which explains why we're dragging that bag on the bottom uh, when we've got the bag on and we're taking this out. If I was going to take this out into the field I would probably take that bag off and frankly it's probably going to live without the bag anyway. All but that I do like the look of the bag. You've got your little pouch on the side that's just got the dog lead in it. Normally your uh, power lead bag itself zips around from the front on both sides 
and goes all the way down to the back. It becomes a bit of a nuisance when you want to open it because you've got to open the flap then you've got to open the zip on this side. You've got to come around and open the zip on this side. Then you can open your flap. You've got a handle, a couple of screws in there so you could take that off if you wanted to. It does have a couple of eyelets on the back of the cover here. What you would use those for, I don't know. I don't know whether I'd rely on those to be tying it down. And we've got those same eyelets on the front there as well. This is awesome because it makes it like an esky and the way you can just drag it around, there's a couple of little latches on either side here one on this side and just pull it out and then that just comes out like that and becomes a handle and then obviously you can use that as a tie down point so to lock it back in again you have to push the little latches and then she just slides back in now all your brass monkeys come with the same cable it's going to come with a ciggy socket um, which will goes into the standard plug that fits in the back of your fridge now brass monkey does give you the longest cables i think i've ever seen this has got to be Probably a four metre cable. I'll put that up on the screen. As much as I like the look of the bag, it's a snazzy looking bag. It's a bit of a pain in the backside the way you open it. You have to undo the zip on either side. So there's one on the back. So you undo those like that. And then you undo your Velcro strap and then lift that up. And then you access the fridge. So fortunately that flap opens that way. The fridge opens this way or the other way. So it's a little bit weird. It's just too much of a pain in the backside to undo both of those zips to get into the fridge. Every one of my fridges, literally every one of my fridges, 12 volt fridges, so the one, the caravan, the little brass monkey, the giant, the Waco, the Dometic, and now these two brass monkeys, or the three brass monkeys all, all told, uh, and the caravan fridge, which is uh, Vitra Frigo or something along those lines. Every one of my fridges has been second hand. In addition to being able to have an onboard battery, 7.8 or 15.6, uh, plugged in, which makes it basically just like a portable esky, a portable freezer, you can wheel it around, just running off that battery. You also take your little solar panel that you can take down. I'll be using my All Powers solar panels, review there. Uh, but Brass Monkey does have a solar panel that you can buy uh, to go with this as an optional extra, as an accessory and it will just plug in here, and it has an MPPT controller on board. I think it's MPPT. I'll put it on the screen if it's PWM, um, and that will charge up the battery from the solar and run the fridge there as well. So other than just purely the design, there's a couple of reasons I went and grabbed these Brass Monkey fridges, and in particular why I was looking at the 35. One is I wanted something that was gonna be about the same height as the bed build over the back, so it could sit in the back here, and basically become the foot of that bed. And what I can do is just throw the mattress over the top of that. The 45 popped up, so I grabbed that. Decided that it was a little bit too big, so invested more time in keeping an eye out for a 35. As soon as this one popped up, I went and grabbed it. Still a little bit too tall, but it's a lot closer than the 45 was, so that's why I had to look at the 35 there as well. I wanted a dual zone, but I wanted the smallest dual zone I could get. Now, happy to be corrected, if you know of a dual zone fridge that is smaller, that is smaller than 35 litre, so a dual zone smaller than 35 litres, put it down in the comments. I'll be interested to hear about it. But at this stage, my belief is that this is the smallest capacity dual zone fridge that you're going to get now we're talking true dual zone we're not talking about something that's just a single zone or operate as a fridge or freezer we're talking about something that has proper dual zone that will operate in fridge and freezer mode at the same time but another thing i really like about this and maybe want to have a go at it the onboard battery and the solar Point me to another another brand, well-known bridge, whether it be your Angles, your Wacos, uh, your ARBs, your Dometics, any of those. Point me to any of those that are doing something unique like this. Now, I've certainly seen this option on some other Chinese branded type fridges. Pretty unique, and I like trying stuff that's different. I like trying stuff that's new, and you know, if they're going to have a crack and put a solar panel in the you know, put an input for a solar panel and give me an onboard battery, I'm down, mate. Like, I like that sort of stuff. And to their credit, at that price point, don't get wrong, their batteries aren't cheap. Uh, but ultimately, I've still had that Blue Eddy 
150, which is a 100 amp hour lithium battery that I could just pick up and take and plug this into 240 and have that run off that all day. But to have this all built in, to have the solar input, to have the solar controller on board, it's a true dual zone, it's rugged as all get out. The screen mm, could be better, um, but ultimately you've got the app as a backup. It just looks like a rugged bit of kit. It's just solid. Um, it just reminds me of the old school Esky. It just reminds me of the old school Esky and I really, really like it. These are the first dual zone fridges that I've had. And I've got to tell you, I'm probably not going back to single zones. If you're anything like me, you probably started with your single zones and you've just got your normal fridges. But I've got to tell you, now that I've got these, I don't think I'll go back to a single zone. Just the flexibility to have this either running as all fridge, or fridge and freezer, or, or freezer I suppose if I wanted to, but I'm not going to want to do that. Just having that little bit of capacity as for a freezer when I'm going camping to keep my meats and stuff in, is just going to be another level for me. Normally I've just resorted to having my frozen foods, like my meats, my, you know, my steaks, my sausages, um, stuff like that, frozen before I've gone away for yeah, three, four days, whatever the case may be, and just accepted that they're going to get cold, but they're not going to be frozen, and they're just going to be sitting in a normal fridge, and they're not going to be stay, and they're not going to stay frozen for the duration of that camp. But to be able to have some space in here that is dedicated to freezer. It's, uh, it's a no-brainer, and to be honest, I don't know why I hadn't thought of it before. There is an app for this. Install Brass Monkey, scan for the fridge, which it will do straight up. Touch the fridge, it'll show AP on the screen, and then just go and touch the settings button on the screen, and the next thing you'll have the app coming up. So in using the app, you can see here, if we're running on battery, the app will show you what percentage of the battery is left. We're showing 60%. If you plug it back in, you'll see that'll switch over to charging. So it's a good way of keeping an eye on your battery. If you're out in the field, you can obviously just have this on your phone or whatever, and you'll be able to see the status of your battery. The only thing that you can do on the face of either of the fridges, you can do in the application. So, and that obviously includes changing the temperature settings on the fridge and changing the temperature setting on the freezer. You can change uh, whether you want it in max or eco mode. Again, all of this is available on the front of the fridge, whether you want it locked, uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit, and then pair and unpair. You're going to show the temperatures of both sides of the fridge, so your fridge and your freezer, or your freezer and your fridge, whichever way you want to call it. Uh, you can turn the fridge on or off. Now that's the whole fridge, on or off. You can turn the individual sides on or off. If you only want to use the small side to save power, you can do that. Whatever setting is on, that's what I get. Like I said, I've been running this for several months now, and running the additional thermometers, just to make sure that what I'm seeing on the front of the fridge and what I'm setting on the fridge is actually the temperatures I'm getting and these have been pretty close, they've been within a degree or two. The temperature settings I've got to say and the temperatures that we're showing on the fridge at the time, whether it be on the front or on the application, have proven to be accurate or very close to accurate. If you're running multiple fridges like I am and they're in the same area, what you can't do is have both of these fridges showing up when you do the scan. I'm now connected to this one though, but I want to access the 45. Can't now just go and select the fridge. What I've got to do is go unpair here, and then scan for fridges. You see they'll both come up. Now I can access the 45 by just touching on that. And we're now in the settings of the 45. If I want to go back to the 35, process is the same. We go unpair, scan for fridges, and we go back to our 35. So if I was coming down to watch a mate play a game of footy or something along those lines, watch a mate play a game of soccer, you know, if you want to go down to watch the kids play their sport for the day, and rather than hauling an esky down, take this down, get yourself one of the batteries, plug it in, and you've got your fridge sitting there for the day, you've got food, kids come off, gala days. This would be absolutely epic on a gar one of the kids' gala days or something like that, where you're there for the whole day. Yeah, depending on the battery, you're gonna get around about seven hours or something, so that's enough to cover you for a day, day at the beach or something along those lines. If your kid's playing a gala day, you can have all the food and sandwiches and all that sort of stuff packed up in here, ready to go, ice blocks, kids are gonna love you. What I'm thinking it's gonna be handy for is when I get to camp and I can lift the fridge out of the car. It's going to be full of stuff, so it's going to be heavy. Going to have your beers in it. Drag this over to your campfire. Set it up beside the campfire. 
and you're good to go for the night. You've got cold beers right beside you. What could be better? Wheels and the handle make it real convenient as far as just dragging around. Other than that, it's just a fridge. Nothing will change your life forward driving or just in a general car like having a fridge in the car once you've had a fridge in the car you'll never ever 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 go back to eskies you'll you just won't do it fridges in the car especially if you can have a setup where you can run it 24 7 don't get me wrong it's not just the cost of the fridge it's the battery and the solar panels and the dc dc charge and the wiring and all that sort of stuff so the, it can be expensive just to have a fridge in the car but once you have a fridge in the car, man, it just, it's just brilliant. Like the missus is going to love it for throwing her groceries in and stuff when she goes shopping. That means she doesn't have to race home to get the ice cream in the fridge. That works for me as well. I'll be able to throw me frozen stuff in the fridge and then, you know, go shopping, continue on doing my shopping. Having drinks constantly in the car, just being able to walk around and reach out and grab a drink out, having cold water for the dog. Certainly I know when I go camping and with the other guys and they're using eskies, they're always sort of tapping me on the shoulder going, can I throw some stuff in your fridge? Oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, of course you can. I've heard of people having um, DOA issues. You know, it's been delivered. The takeaway and got out of the box hasn't been working. Um, just taking it back to J Car, and it's just been swapped over with no questions asked. As far as the warranty claims goes, any of those people that I've mentioned where you can locate these from, I think they're all going to be pretty good as far as resolving any issues that you have. And obviously, if J Car will take them back and swap it over for your new one straight away without any questions asked i think that goes a long way to telling you how brass monkey then must be responding to j car when they send these back they must be taking them back and swap them over whatever beyond the few people that i've heard have issues uh, everyone that's had an issue has taken it back and had it swapped out without any problems so overall yeah look i rate them at the end of the day they cool stuff and they cool stuff to the settings that i input into them uh, and they do everything I expected around to doing the video on the solar panels and the input and the battery and stuff like that. So that's it. That's our Brass Monkey 45 litre and 35 litre dual zone fridges uh, with the solar input and the onboard battery as optional extras. From me, the Den Monkey, about the Brass Monkey, to you monkeys, thumbs up. The three monkeys, thank you. And we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.